Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. It's real late. It's Hot 97. My guy, uh, uh, a staple, a staple of what we do here on Sunday nights. My guy, Mayhem Loren, Lorenovich, Lorenovici in the building. That's the word, man. Good. Thank you for having me. Come on, man. Thank you for the for the consistent, great music over the years. And right now, the the project that I'm that we're banging at this very moment is this Derringer project. What's the name of this Derringer album? Black Vladimir, man. Um, okay. First of all, well, first of all, why? I already know. Yeah, why Black Vladimir? Let's start there. It's funny. I get that. I get that question a lot, especially with everything going on right now. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Putin. It was honestly just an alias I had. I once told a story to my man that I had told someone that my name is Vladimir and I'm an architect from New Jersey. It was just just like a, you know, an alias, different <laughs> names in different places at different times, and then they just ran with it. It's just like, yo, Black Vladimir, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, and how did the Derringer uh, connection come about? We just been cool for a minute, man. Like like I met Griselda as they started to rise, and the first one I met was Gun and um. Then I met, you know, Conway Benny Derringer through him, and he actually had the idea. He was like, yo, you and D sound real good together. Y'all should just put a plate together, and we took our time. Four years later, we're here, you know? And it's, uh, man, it's a it's a project, man. Do you, Where do you consider this among your projects? Because to me, this might be the one. It's probably my favorite project to date, you know? You like all your children. You can't pick a favorite child, but <laughs> not it. Yeah, right. Right now, this this is the one. Um, and also, man, the last few years you've just had a really great run. Like since the, since you first popped up on the scene, and everyone you know at first knew you as you know friend of Bronson and MC. To you know, Bronson then goes and does his own things while he's doing. You guys come together. You do your f that's delicious stuff. Yeah. You do projects. He does books, and then he's making art. He's doing all. And you have just steady built your brand to be like a really, really steady situation for yourself. Do you do you get asked by people how to pull this off? Like how to because you're basically doing whatever you want. You have a cooking show. You're rapping. You're making money doing it. You're making money doing shows. It's a pretty great situation you have. I mean, you got to just stay consistent and have fun with it. Like at the end of the day, everything I'm doing is. Things I would be doing if nothing was going on, if that, if that makes sense. Like, if this wasn't my career, I'd still be rapping, I'd still be cooking, I'd still be hanging out with my friends, and just somehow I merged everything together, and that's life. Uh, for people who are just getting to the party, where did it all start for you in the in the rap game? Like, what was the very beginning for Mayhem Loren? Oh, man, just, I want to say early to mid-2000s, just mixtapes, things like that. Like, I think I put my first project out in... 08, 09, and that was actually Bronson's first appearance was on that. Wow. Yeah, like I put out a project, and he dropped about a year and a half after, and his shit went through the roof. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you know, and um, we just kept going, man, just being consistent with it. That's all I know. Yeah, and and did you... So you were rapping first. You were the more serious about it first. Yeah, yeah. A Act was always nice, but he he didn't he didn't rap initially. It's crazy because he used to he used to drive me to the studio. Like he he had a car before me when we were younger. He had a car, and he would always freestyle in the whip. And I always tell him like, "Yo, you nice, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, get in the booth." And then got in the booth and never got out. And and was there a moment? Was there? This is just like some real human emotion talk. Was there ever a moment for you? Where like he's blowing up and you're unsure if it's gonna happen for you and you're like, man, how Nah, that's that's my brother. So it's like if he's shining, I'm shining and we just not at all. Like, you know, I just kept doing what I was doing, he kept doing what he was doing. We get together and knock things out. Like, nah, not for a minute. That's know? amazing. That's yeah. amazing. That's that's amazing. Cause I mean, you guys, you'll always be associated. You always do records together. Yeah, that's that's been consistent. Saying it's, it's before rap, like that's family. We grew up like I know since I'm twelve years old. Like Wait, which so you guys were we in middle school? High, yeah. yeah, yeah, middle school, junior high school together. Like that's that's family. This is way before rap or food or and, and were else. you both and were you both always into the food thing too? Yo, it's funny. We we actually um the class we got cool in was they used to have electives. It would be like gym, wood shop, whatever. We took cooking. And that's where we met. And it was funny because we would like make donuts or cookies, pancakes, and we would just do whatever we want. Like he'd bring in a steak, I'd have a rack of lamb, we'd just be cooking whatever. And I'm like, oh, this kid does what he wants. I do what I want. And that's how we got cool. <laughs> For real. And and when did it get like more when did you go from being like you're messing around in, in a home ec class 
to like you guys are foodies and you're trying to hit all the restaurants, etc. Just life, man. He he worked in a restaurant. Like his, yeah. his family had a restaurant, and um, we lost touch for a minute. Like we were in junior high school, and in high school, we went to different high schools. Then we we reconnected and just you know experienced life, and that's that. You know. All right, we are here on a Sunday night, in New York City. Mayhem Loren in the building. His project with uh, Derringer who, if you haven't been following, is one of the sickest up-and-coming producers. I, mean, I don't know if I can call him up-and-coming. He's just an underground stud. He's I mean, a young champion, he's, man. He really is. Like, he's he's really becoming that dude. Um, the Project Black Vladimir is out right now. Um, so tell people about some of the other things you got going on because it's not just the the album with Darren. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, we, you know, right right now it's Vladimir's season, you know, but... um. <laughs> I got a lot of things, a lot of things down the pipeline, man. Me, me and Madlib got an album on the way. Woo. As always, me and Muggs have more work. Me and Muggs are sitting on like a hundred songs. We got to just figure out what to do with them. Um, you know, I'm about to get back in with fraud, but the you, you know, the usual suspects, man. You have really made um, got yourself a real like group of super friends when it comes to producers. Yo, it just happened. I mean, between you, your your one phone call awayness from alchemist fraud that's probably on the way too to be honest man. oh an alchemist project yeah yeah you know we, we haven't set it in stone but we've been talking about it for years he's just he's doing what he's doing i'm doing what i'm doing but don't be surprised if you hear about that too yeah i guess that's kind of surprising he's the one that you think the project would have already happened yeah because you guys are together a lot everyone sees you on tv together let me tell you that's what happens when you're friends you just hang out and, and you don't work i go to his crib and we just chill and eat food and i pass out and leave <laughs> like you know what i mean but we about to get it in, <laughs> and 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 where can people see your uh, see your cooking show as well? Because you got a lot happening. Yeah, I have two shows two shows on YouTube right now. One called Fridge Diving, where I kind of just see what's in the fridge and turn it into something. Another one is called Flavor in Your Ear, where I'm only cooking song, cooking things from la- um, cooking food from rap lyrics. Oh, so we got like a T-bone steak, cheese, eggs, and Welch's grape. Okay. Oh, you know that's a you know that's a thing that Sif and I talk about quite a bit on the podcast because. Yeah. The controversy about what does Welch's great mean exactly. I'm going to tell you how I took it. Please. I took it as Welch's grape juice. You were always a what? Yeah, Welch's grape juice But guy. you know, some people said that Big liked to drink Welch's grape soda with his T-bone steak, cheese, eggs, and Welch's grape. Then I've also heard it could have been the spread on the toast, like Welch's grape jelly. So I don't it know. It really could. And, and the thing is, Sife is like indignant that it is uh, the Welch's grape I think juice, but it really is reasonable to be any of them because yeah, 100%. because you can have the Welch's grape jelly with the toast. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't have the toast without it. Actually. So wait. So what are some of the other uh, what are some of the other lines you're you're using from rap to make cooking uh, to make dishes? What else did I do? I did the um, dead press lentil fruit is uh, what I say. <laughs> Lentil soup is mental fruit. You know, I did a. You did the, you did the be healthy joint. Yeah, the be healthy joint. Yeah, I always like that song too. Love um, that record. Ludicrous joint, catfish sandwich, catfish fried up, dirty self fed. Wow. Um, I did the big pun. Um, big pun joint was it? Shark, shark salad with carrots, pork chops, chops and, and applesauce. Apple sauce. Except I flipped it because I don't eat pork, so I just made lamb chops and orange sauce. Wow. You know? But yeah, you know, just there's a bunch of them, you know. And and how much do you enjoy, like, are you as passionate about doing the cooking stuff as you are about the rap? Is it all sort of... Yeah, it's the same part of the brain. You're creating things, you know what I mean? So whether you're in the kitchen or you're in the lab, you're just you're still cooking. Um, So what do you say when people, like, when people ask you how you do it? Besides being consistent, like, was there one particular... Do you have a moment that you felt like the dots started connecting for you on how to do this? Because th- there's different levels, obviously, to this rap life yeah. you know and there are people who are well you know we're not able to make it so they just get a full-time job whatever they move on there are people who continue to do it but they're but they're broke and they're struggling there's people a little bit above that yeah. then there's people who are like nah they're making the music they want they're resting their head in some place comfortable and they're doing good like listen i'm not saying you're walking around you know flashing cash and gold every minute you don't know what's in this bag but i don't that's the thing playing with you (laughs) (laughs) but but you live a good life so what do you see one place where like it kind of all came together nah but to to be honest it's that it wasn't one place it was just literally not even having a minute to think just stay active just always doing something and eventually you know just 
get where you're at. And what about now? Do you do you, do you take time? Do you ever vacation? Do you nah, like? You know what? I I can't even tell you. I don't even think I had an, a vacation in my adult life. Like I take work trips, and if I like something or a place, I may extend it for a day or two. And that's the vacation. But yeah, it? I haven't taken a. A solo vacation. I like to say my life is a hard work and vacation, if that makes sense. And it does, it, that actually does make sense. I understand. I just like, uh, yeah, sometimes it's hard. I guess the difference is I feel similarly about my life, except my life does require me to like show up every day like it's a job. Yeah. So it kind of weighs on you a little different, even though your stuff is a job. The fact that you get to generally move. Yeah, you can work from wherever. Yeah, you're working from wherever. They're scheduling. You're shooting your TV show. They're scheduling around you. There's a, there, that's, a that's a luxury. 100%. You know, like I, the showing up every day at the same time to do the radio. If I could just roll in ex whenever I felt like, then I think I would fully consider it a vacation. But as it is right now, I'm still excited when Friday comes because I've had to be committed twice a day, every yep. day, you know? Um, all right, so you already said that you have a... Mad Lib project on the way. Hundred percent. There will be a Harry Fraud project. Definitely. Um, mugs. There's another mugs project. There's, uh, several mugs projects. What? What? Um. Which and Derringer part two. I know we just on oh, Vladimir, but if you think we're not gonna jump right back in, you out of your mind. Like you know, it, it's go time. No, no, it's you absolutely need to jump back in again. Also, tell people real quick if you're listening right now on Hot 97, you're watching on YouTube, whatever it may be. If you're not familiar with this Derringer project, Black Vladimir, who are the features you got on here too? It's kind of crazy. Yeah, features we got uh West Side Gun, Conway, my brother Hologram, Fleet Lord, El Camino, mm. Bronson. That's the first song on the album. <laughs> there you go. You know? Yo, Bronson bodied it on the uh on the Rock Marcy al Yo, album too. Bronson comes through and bodies everything for years, man. That's what he does. <laughs> this is this is what he does. Yo, before I let you go, I'm curious. Of all the adventures you've gotten to go on across the world, you Bronson, Al doing F That's Delicious and seeing all kinds of crazy things. Are there any people you've gotten to meet along those journeys that really stand out the most as like, man, I'm blessed. I've, I've gotten to do some cool things. Honestly, a lot of people, and it's dope because there's almost, there's not a continent I could go to and not call someone to like pull up and grab some food and kick it, drink some wine. Like that's that's the most beautiful part about the whole, you know, situation. Yeah, man. You guys, like where where are your favorite cities to go? Food cities or just cities in general? La, let's let's do cities in general first. I always like Paris. Paris, Paris, London. Copenhagen's dope, man. I like yeah. Copenhagen. Um, I don't know, Barcelona, Jamaica, Morocco, everywhere. I like everywhere. <laughs> and what about food? What's the number one food city for you? Yo, I still like New York. New really? You, still, you have you have New York number one? I mean, I think it's reasonable. Yeah, no I mean, one could New argue York, it. Yeah, yeah. New York is just, you, you can't really beat that. But I love New York. Jamaica was amazing. Um, <sighs> again, Paris. I, yeah, I know Paris. Like, you know what I love about Paris? The sleeper thing about Paris is if you're an American, if you're like an ignorant American like me, you go to Paris for the first time and you assume it's going to be like kind of foofy. Yeah. And then every single spot that you, in my opinion, every time I've ever just pulled up to a random spot, even if it looks like it's going to be a tourist trap near the Eiffel Tower, you order the burger and fries, still slaps. Fresh. Yeah, pastries. You know you know another sleeping city? Philly, man. Yo. Philly's a crazy food city. It really is. Talk about it. Where are your spots in Philly? I like Angelo's. Angelo's is fire. Mm. Um, there's a bunch of spots. I can, you know. But no, Philly, Philly slept on as a city in a lot of ways. Musically, um, food-wise, culture-wise, just like how cool a town it is. It's dope. When I go to Philly, I feel like I'm in old New York. If that makes sense. Wow. That's why I like Philly a lot. It doesn't feel like the Disney world that is New York now. Yeah. It feels like childhood mayhem. Yeah, Philly's like 98. You're 98 again. <sighs> young young mayhem in Bronson roaming the streets of Queens. What's Where Where do you consider in Queens the, the most home for you? All over. I've moved around a lot. I've, you know, just. Okay, is there one place in New York, period, that you consider the most, like, Someone said, go, like, if you have a dream about going home, this is the place you're going. Just to New York. Just give me the Kennedy or LaGuardia and I'm good, man. <laughs> I'll figure the rest out. Perfectly said. All right, man. His name is Mayhem Loren. Him and Derringer have a project out called Black Vladimir. I promise you. Yo, man, this is right in the conversation with the Rock Marcy Alchemist album, any of the dope, the Mock Hami album last year, any of the dope underground albums that have come out. That real late album, which, by the way, thank you for blessing my brother. My I appreciate pleasure. you. Came through with Buck Wild. Um, 
Nah, it, this album is as good as any of the, the quality underground albums of the last two years. So go check out Black Vladimir. Mayhem, you know you're welcome here anytime, my brother. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Always. Mayhem Loren. We got a throwback coming up next. It's real late on Hot 97. 